Hello, welcome back everyone. Today we have another remarkable story. Today's book is called Nobody Important, written by Lee J. Marvin. Now this magical story is about a world on the attack and how an unbelievable man came up with a plan to save the world. Now let's see what happens. Let's get started. The evil ones attacked the underlings with their savage swords and wicked ways. The ones wise and creative world of the underlings was on the siege with the enemies from the north. They came with their fire and folly mounting wild beasts from above, raining down thunder and chaos to the western lands of the underlings. They were led by the shouting king, a hairless monster with a crown made from stolen underling treasures. <laughs> the underlings tried to respond with a war of words from their elders, but the evil ones seemed bent on destruction and tunneled for the west. The underlings thought they could deter their might by broadcasting the terror to the world. The higher elders and the wise chieftains chattered away, devising plans to strike back, and the atheist artists painted their flags blood red and cried to the world for help. Now as the war grew and grew, and the innocent underlings watched in terror, their northern lands were covered in flame and terror and fear overcame them. Most of the regular underlings went from confused to angry and cried out for the war to end. <laughs> However, one particular underling by the name of Nobody Important, yes, that was his actual name came up with the most surprising and unrealistic plan to stop the war and bring peace to the world again. Nobody important was nothing special. He was overly average and exceptionally ordinary and was never really noticed until he changed the entire world forever. He was the most famous underling for being unknown and unheard of. Until, of course, he stopped the war. But how could such a strangely normal underling cause such an unlikely impact, you ask? Surely, the higher elder underlings and the wise chieftains would be the ones to bring peace with their cunning crafts crashing over the evil ones. And they could sway their power with clever plans and rob the evil ones of their much needed fruits and gains. Surely, the most magic illusionist of the underling order would be able to cast a spell over the war and make it all disappear and would be able to trick televise their vanishing to the new world now surely the atheist hardest would save us all they would paint such a horrid picture of what these evil ones have created that when everyone sees it the evil ones would cower and cry and return to their dark dungeons but no 
the higher held out on the links, and the wise chieftains only made the evil ones more ferocious, that their hungry warriors struck them with might, and they tore through their farms, stuffing their mouths with their berries and wheat. Now the most magic illusionist failed too, angering the evil ones with their not so terrifying televised spells. The evil ones quickly mimicked their spells and televised their own lies to their people and their armies grew and grew with blind soldiers. And even the atheist of artists could not save us as the evil ones spawned their own painters and sculptors in faraway darkness. Now they erected statues of their masters and painted magnificent murals of their conquest as more of their people grew to believe their plight. So, our last hope was nobody important. He was just an uncomplicated underling that nobody really knew too well. How could someone so unfamiliar bring a stop to all this madness? Well, nobody important was a bit of a poet. So I guess he wasn't nobody important after all. He could also sing his words with such sweetness. Even the darkest tombs and the far reaches of the evil dungeons were lit when he spoke. He appeared in front of all the evil ones and the entire army held up their swords and listen, he sang. All of you sword wielders, you bow the tossing, warmongers, you've created monstrous mechanism that crush the earth and drain its life. And then the underling circled around behind it. The higher elders and the wise chieftains put down their parchments and the most magic illusionist lowered their wands. The atheist artist crawled in next to him and put down their paint brushes. Nobody important continued. All of you wiser word sayers you trick twisting, peace criers. You have fed the monsters with your own fears, and now you mirror each other's lives. The underlings looked at the evil ones, and suddenly they didn't seem so different. And that was all it took a look at each other face to face. After hearing those words sung by nobody important, the war ended quickly and peace was finally restored to the lands. Now the underlings went on with all their underlinging business and the evil ones became less evil. Nobody important went back to his overly average and exceptionally ordinary life. His face was soon forgotten, but his words were forever remembered. The young underlings and infants, not so, evil ones, often sing his words as the sun sets over the western peaks. Now their sweet song echoes into the far north and trickles down into the west. Warmongers, 
you've created monstrous mechanisms that crush the earth and drain its life. Peace criers, you are fed the monsters with your own fears. And now, you mirror each other's lives. Wow. What a wonderful, wonderful story. Thank you so much for joining us again, boys and girls, for this remarkable story time. We thank you for being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you soon.